Let's connect Azure OpenAI to SQL Manage Instance, read in our data, and then ask some questions about it and get some answers next on Tales from the Field. Everybody just do your thing. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. If this is your first time finding us over at Tales from the Field, give us a like and give us a subscribe. We have a community roundtable every Tuesday at 1 p.m. Eastern time where we feature content created for and about the Azure data community. On Monday and Wednesdays, we have our MS Tech Bits, which are technical videos that can help you in a particular scenario or about a particular subject. You're watching one of those right now. Let's head over to the content. All right, so I'm going to start out at an SSMS, and I've already connected to my Azure SQL Manage instance, and I'm going to use my Movies database. This is a lot of box office data that I've had over time, and we're specifically going to use the domestic box office table. I'm going to do a quick select so we can see some of the data that we're working with. You can see I've got movie data, I've got day, week, years of growth. Uh, important to note, a lot of these values are string values. That's going to be important later. So now that I've got my data and I know what I'm using, let's go over to Visual Studio Code where I can start to work with my Python. And I can see here's my Python. I'm going to use uh, PyODBC. One quick note, make sure you have the ODBC drivers for the SQL instance that you want uh, to be able to be managed. I'm using ODBC drivers 18 and I'm going to run this real quick. This should connect to my SQL manage instance. Use that select query to be able to pull back data frame. I look at the top 10 rows and there it is. It looks exactly like the data we had in SSMS. Now what we can do is we can go over to our Azure portal and begin working with Azure OpenAI. So our next step is I'm going to create an Azure OpenAI service. I'm going to create a resource group for this. I'm going to keep it pretty simple. Uh, Beeball, Azure, OpenAI. And then I'm going to create uh, a service. Again, let's keep it pretty simple. Beeball, Azure, OpenAI, Beebay, right? Um, I'm going to use the default pricing tier. There's only one at the moment. I'm going to allow all networks because I want to be able to make this work as I'm using this demo. As soon as it's available for review and submit, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click create and we will get this initialization going. I've speeded this up a little bit, but it's going to go pretty quick. And these are essentially the steps that we're going to get. Uh, once the resource is available, we're going to go to resources. Now that I'm here, I can see I've got an explore option. I'm going to click on explore and that will open up uh, the open Azure AI studio. A lot of different things we can do, but I'm going straight over to completions. I have no models, so I need to create a new deployment. I'm going to select my model. I'm using the text DaVinci 03 model for this demo, and then I need to name it. This is going to be the engine name for a deployment. Uh, it could be anything. Often people do the same thing as a model. I'm just going to say movies uh, demo and then create. Once this creates, you can see that I've got all these parameters that I could adjust for my model. I don't want to adjust anything yet, but if I wanted to view code just to validate that there's Python and I could hit this and I could pass something through, uh, this view code gives us a sample code for Python. In the dropdown, we've got multiple other options, but this is a great way for us to be able to test connectivity. The other thing we're going to need are keys and our endpoints. So when you come to your keys and your endpoints, you're going to want to get your key. You're also going to want to get your endpoint. Those are two key resources that we're going to have to have in the next portion of our Python script. So once I've got those values, I can come back over. Now I'm going to be using my additional things. One key moment I want to make sure that we're aware of, the model quarks. I had to put that in to get that to work. That was different than Valentina's blog that uh, I had looked at. And what we're going to do is we're going to ask it a question. We're going to pass in a data frame. I'm going to say, how many rows are there? And what are the unique movie titles within our domestic box office data set? We're going to go ahead and we're going to run this in Python. It's going to execute the new agent chain. And very quickly, I, I get some items back. Now, this is it processing. So I want to look at the first one. You can see it said there's five rows. I know that's wrong. Uh, there's, there's not just five rows. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of rows in this table. So some of these results you're going to find aren't 100% perfect. But let's go to the next thing. I It's telling me, and this is what we would want, how the model is making the decisions. So it's telling me how it got to the unique titles. So let's scroll down. Here's the observations that it went through. And 
you can see here's all these different unique names that we have in our box office. And then the final answer, here are the unique names, and it begins to list it out. Okay, so we got one out of two right, not bad. Let's pass another question along to be able to show how this will work. So next up, what I really want to know is what movie has the largest grossed? Pretty interesting. So gross is a term to say how much money did we rake in at the box office? So I'm trying to say what is our best performing? So we can see here's the data it comes up with. And the final is the largest gross is Harry Potter and the Goblet of Bar Fire with $998,000. I don't think that's correct. Now, this is also an issue of my data. Keep that in mind. The model is only going to be intelligent as the data we provide. This data was text in format. So I need to ask it to make some changes. Convert gross to date column to money. And then what movie has the largest gross? Let's see. It's beginning to do some calculations. We can see here's its logic. Star Wars The Force Awakens has the largest domestic gross with $936 million in there. Now, I know it eventually hit the billion, so this is something that I would want to fact check with my data set, but the fact that it can convert numbers for me is amazing. So the next thing I'd like to know, what are the average per theater box office returns? Let's convert that to money. I've already learned my lesson, right? So what is the largest average per theater? I know the final answer, it's $999. I don't think that's quite right. What I actually really want to know is what movie has the largest return. So maybe what it did is maybe we topped out on something. I'm going to rephrase and re-ask this question. So that way, instead of saying what movie has the largest average theater per return, I'm going to change this to a movie title, the specific name of the column that we're working with. And... Now that we run it, we can see it begin to make the uh, adjustments, could not convert, and that might be something I need to adjust with my data. Remember, the better I, I clean up my data as an ETL operation, the better my answers will return. La La Land has the largest average per theater. That's really interesting, but it didn't give me the number. I feel like if we correlated the average per theater return and the movie title that we would actually get a result where we could correlate this a little bit better. So let's try this one more time. I'm going to change my question because I want to say, don't just bring me back the average theater per uh, return. I want the movie title and the average, the largest average theater return because um, we left that out last time. So let's change my question. What movie title has the largest average theater return and what is the average per theater? Now we begin to go through this again, and it's going through the math. This I could buy. The average for Infinity War was $23,767 per theater. Well, that's really interesting. And how fascinating that we can do this with our data. Uh, absolutely great stuff. All right, so what did we cover today? Well, first off, we covered how we can take data from our Azure SQL Manage instance, load it into a Python data frame, and then utilize Azure OpenAI to be able to get insights about our data. We also discussed how the format of the data is really important to make sure that we actually ETL it, but we can also do some conversions uh, within the shape of the data just through interacting with the OpenAI model. We also realized if you wear your glasses and take one of the video, you're going to have to wear your glasses all the way throughout the rest of the video. So maybe I'll remember to take them off next time or maybe I'll leave them on. We'll see. All right. Thank you so much for joining us on Tales from the Field. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, you know where we like to keep this going in the comments. So sound off. Let me know. Was this good? Did you like it? Was it helpful? I'm also going to take this code and I'm going to throw it up on the GitHub channel. Um, Wonderful stuff. And also thank you to Valentina and her great blog, which inspired me to go down this path and play around with this. A lot of fun. Thanks everybody. Take care. Day, wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day.